All right, guys, so now that we've built our app, we're finally ready to actually run the app. And running our app is the process where we turn our code into the actual app. And this is done using Xcode, of course. So there's two ways of running our app. Either we could run it onto a physical iPhone or iPad device, or we could use the Xcode simulator, which creates a simulated iOS device on our Mac. Let's first look at how to run on the simulator because it's really, really easy. All you have to do is to go up into this top left corner, click on the app name, and then in the drop down list, you can select the simulator that you want to use. So the simulator device that you want to run your app on. Now, in my case, I'm going to choose the iPhone XR. And then all you have to do is just hit the play button. So just like iTunes, you can run by hitting the play button and hit the stop button to stop running the app. And you can watch as the progress happens up here. And once it's done, it should automatically open up the simulated device by itself. Now, the first time you run your app, it might take a while for the simulator to load up. It's just like cold starting your iPhone. But after the first time this happens, then using the same simulator device should take a couple of seconds for it to load up your app. So I fast forward the process a little bit, but it should take anywhere between one to five minutes for it to load up for the first time. And then once it's done, you should see a blank screen for a couple of seconds or more, and then it should display your actual app. And you can move the simulator around just by dragging on its name. And then if you hover around the edge, you can actually resize it to the size that you prefer. And you can even go to the hardware menu here and click on various things such as the home button or to rotate the app left and right. Now, at the moment, because we've designed our app on a iPhone 11 or an iPhone XR canvas, the diamond and the text is only going to look centered on devices with the same aspect ratio. So the XR, the 11 or the X. Now, in coming modules, we're going to learn how to make this right and set rules for our display. But for now, if you have a physical device that has a different aspect ratio, so you had one of the plus sizes, then you can actually just simply change the canvas right here in the size inspector, update the design, and then when you run it, it should look exactly as you see in the canvas. So now that we've seen how easy it is to run the app on the Xcode simulator, the next step is to run it on a physical iPhone. Now, if you don't have a physical iOS device, say an iPhone or an iPad, then feel free to skip the rest of this lesson and continue on to the next module. But if you do have a physical device and you want to be able to see your app running on it, then continue ahead with me. Now, running on a physical device because it has all of your sensitive pieces of data and a lot of personal information, it's a little bit harder than running it on the simulator. So there's a six step process that we're going to go through and I'm going to run through it with you step by step. So the first step is to check that your Xcode and iOS versions match. Now, what do I mean by matching? Well, if you head over to Xcode and go to About Xcode, you should see the version of your Xcode. And currently I'm running 11.0. So for Xcode version 11.0, it will know about iOS versions 13.0 and below. If you have a physical device that's running iOS 13.0, you're perfectly aligned with the Xcode version. Now, how can you find this information out? Well, it's easy as going to the settings and then general and about and somewhere in this list, you should see your software version. Now, I know I'm showing this to you on the simulator, but if you do the same on your iPhone or your iPad, it should be exactly the same process. So the easiest way is to update your Xcode and update your iPhone or iPad both to the latest versions and then check that the number after the decimal place actually matches. And notice how Xcode 11 is the matching version for iOS 13. So if you had Xcode 10, then it won't know about iOS 13. 
So you'll have to update Xcode. But the easiest way of making sure that everything runs perfectly smoothly is checking that you have Xcode 11 and you have iOS 13 and that the number after the decimal place matches between your Xcode and your iOS. So that's step one. Step two is you have to add a Apple developer account. Don't worry, you don't have to pay for this. You can simply just use your free Apple ID that you use to download apps on the App Store. Now, in order to do this, you can go into Xcode and click on preferences. And then here you should be able to add a Apple ID by clicking on the add button. Select Apple ID and then here enter your Apple ID um, which is usually an email and then your password. And once you've successfully logged in, you should be able to see your app ID show up right here inside the accounts tab. So now that we've added our Apple developer account, it's time to sign our app. So back inside Xcode, make sure that you've got your project I am rich selected and your I am rich target selected, and then head over to signing and capabilities tab and make sure that the automatically managed signing checkbox is checked. Now click on the team drop down list and then select the account that you've added just now. Or if you have a developer account like I do, then you'll see your team's name or your company name in there. Now, if you don't see anything in here, you only see none, then make sure that you've actually added your account successfully and that you see it underneath here as an Apple ID. So once you've selected your team, all the errors on this page should go away. But if it doesn't and you see an error that looks like this, something about failed to create provisioning profile, then it might be because you haven't got your device connected using a USB cable. So just continue on and watch the next step of the video. And then you'll be able to click on this try again button here and the errors should go away. Now, just remember that we've also created that side loading troubleshooting PDF guide, which you can download from the previous lesson so that if you encounter any issues with side loading your app onto your physical device, then you'll be able to refer to that and resolve any problems there. And we should now be ready to actually connect our device. So we'll do steps four and five together. Grab your USB cable and connect your physical device, your iPhone or your iPad to your Mac. Now, at this point, you might see a pop up show up on your phone, which asks you whether if you trust this computer. So go ahead and tap on the trust button. And it might also require you to type in the phone device passkey and follow the on-screen instructions to complete that process. Now that you've successfully connected your device and trusted your own computer, it's time to run your app. So go ahead and click on the top bar here and select your physical phone as the device that you want to run your app onto. Now you might get a warning here saying something like um, device um, iOS version lower than deployment target, something along those lines. And that's just because you need to update your iPhone or your iPad to the latest version of iOS that's compatible with Xcode, which we talked about earlier on. But once you've got your device selected, then go ahead and hit the play button to run your app. And at this point, you might see a message like this iPhone is busy preparing debugger support. You'll probably see this the very first time you connect your phone and after every major iOS update. What's happening is that your phone has to tell your computer all about itself, like what kind of hardware it's running and its crash logs, amongst other things. I've seen this take anywhere between 2 and 15 minutes, so you might just have to be a little bit patient. At some point, it will all be done and the window will disappear. You should then see the app open up automatically on your phone. And it's really important that you let Xcode always automatically open the app. Even if you see the icon, as I do right here, if you tap on it, it usually means that you're actually opening a slightly older version. It's always best to wait for Xcode to do its thing. Now, if when you run your app and the end result looks a little bit crooked like this, then it might be because you've got a different screen size compared to the one on your canvas. So here, my design is created on an iPhone 11 canvas, but I'm running it on an iPhone SE. 
So say if you had a physical iPhone SE or an iPhone 4 or something that basically has a different aspect ratio to your canvas, then the end result of your design will look a little bit weird like this. So in later lessons, we're going to be learning about something called auto layout and setting constraints, where we're going to fix this so that our designs always look the way we want, no matter which screen size it's being run on. But meanwhile, if you want to fix this and you want it to look good on your physical device, then you can simply go and change the device to match the device that you actually own. So for example, if you wanted to run this on an iPhone SE, then we could change that and then we can update the locations of our label and our image view so that when we run it on our device again, it ends up looking the same as the canvas like this. So now that you've set up your device and Xcode for running your apps onto your physical device, the next time you need to run it, you don't have to repeat this process. All you have to do is to plug it in, select it, and then hit run. And it's much, much easier from now on. Now, so far, I've shown you how to run your app from your computer if you have a wired connection, but you can also run it wirelessly. So I'm going to quickly show you how to do this. To start off, you need your phone to be connected to your Mac with a wire. We first have to use a USB cable and get the wireless side loading set up first. Once you've got it plugged in and you can see it as a device right here, then go ahead and go to Window and Devices and Simulators. And you should see your connected device right here. If you don't, make sure that you repeat the previous process that we've gone through in order to make sure that it shows up here. And then we're going to go ahead and click the connect via network checkbox. Now, it's really important that for this to work, your phone and your Mac has to be connected to the same Wi-Fi connection. So not only does your Wi-Fi have to be on both on your Mac and your phone, but you have to be using the same Wi-Fi. But now once that's done, you can unplug your phone and you'll see that you can still find your phone up here in the devices. And now if you hit run, it will be able to run it wirelessly across the internet and show up on your phone. Now, I'm not sure what your experience will be, but for me, I find that the wireless connection tends to be a little bit unreliable. So when I've got a cable with me, I'll always run my phone via the cable. And that way I have a much smoother experience when I'm testing my apps. So that's it. That's how you can run your app on a simulator, on a physical device, and even wirelessly. I hope you had fun doing that. And if you had any issues, be sure to rewatch the video because there were quite a few hoops that you need to jump through before Apple is going to let you through the gates and allow you to get side loading set up properly. Now, once you're done, head over to the next lesson and I've got a challenge for you.